For thousands of years, humans have used animals primarily as food or labor. However, mankind has developed a special relationship with some species of animals. Today we are going to talk about one of these species, cats. Here are 10 interesting facts about cats. I think we should start with how the friendship between man and cat began. When and how exactly did people start keeping cats as their pets? Or to put it another way, when did cats start using humans as their faithful servants? Personally, my cat treats me exactly that way. The oldest remains of a domestic cat have been found by archaeologists in Cyprus. The age of preservation of these remains is nine and a half thousand years. There a man was buried with his cat, and the cat was buried with honors. Expensive seashells were placed around it, indicating that the cat was indeed a pet. Cats were not originally tame. They were very wild. The ancestors of modern cats looked something like this, slightly larger, more aggressive, and much more fearful. These feral cats are solitary predators and only approach other cats for mating and breeding. However, once upon a time, about 10,000 years ago, they approached humans. This happened in the Middle East. At this time, about 10,000 to 11,000 years ago, there was an agrarian revolution when people began to move from hunting and gathering to growing crops. More grain was grown than could be eaten at once, and it had to be stored for reserves. Such granaries were incredibly attractive to small rodents, mainly mice and rats. Mice ate grain very quickly, multiplied and caused considerable damage to humans. However, this situation was very profitable for wild cats. A large number of mice were concentrated in one place thanks to the grain, and so the wild cats began to come closer and closer to people to hunt. People quickly realized that cats were becoming their salvation in this situation. They began feeding the cats milk, raw meat, and giving them protection from large predators, as well as shelter from the rain and wind. Then a selection process began in which people kept the most affectionate and contactable cats, while aggressive and wild cats were chased away. Thus, the genes contributing to the affectionate and tame nature of cats were passed down from generation to generation. Naturally, many people began to see cats not only as useful animals, but also as companion friends. Cats began to evoke an emotional attachment similar to that of dogs. Cats may have played an important role in the development of mankind. Because of human civilization's ability to produce and store large quantities of food, people could pursue science, crafts, and build large cities. The presence of cats helps control the rodent population, which contributes to human progress. Cats, in turn, have also benefited from this symbiosis. Previously, the range of feral cats was limited, but now they live everywhere there are people, including polar stations in Antarctica. Domestic cats have become some of the most successful animals on our planet. If you've ever had a cat, you may have noticed that when it jumps or falls, it always lands on its feet. This skill seems simple for survival, but for a long time, physicists have seriously studied how cats manage this, because at first glance it seemed to violate the laws of physics. However, nothing can break the laws of physics, so scientists began to do serious research to understand how it really works. The problem was how cats managed to align their bodies in the air without pushing off of anything, from any position. For a long time, no physical model explained this phenomenon without violating the laws of conservation of angular momentum. Technology, especially photography, has helped to solve this problem. In 1894, the French scientist Etienne Jules Marais took a series of photographs of a falling cat using high-speed photography. This made it possible to discern the different stages of the cat's fall and brought more clarity to the problem. Subsequently, scientists even studied the behavior of cats in a state of weightlessness to better understand the issue. In the late 1960s, they were able to figure it out and build mathematical models that explain this phenomenon within the laws of physics. These models describe at what angle and trajectory a cat's body moves when it falls. A deeper dive into these mathematical models will be difficult and uninteresting for most people, so we will not dwell on it. But if briefly and without equations, the cat finds the horizon with its eyes when it falls and bends its body in the middle, then rotates the front and back of its body around its axis. In doing so, it changes the direction of body curvature. Cats developed this skill in the process of evolution because they often had to climb trees and accordingly, often fall from there. The ability to land on their feet has become a vital skill for cats in both wild and domestic environments.
Everyone knows that cats have a very rough tongue, but not everyone knows that cats have spikes on their tongue that are made of the same material as their claws, keratin. This helps them to lick out their fur. Cats spend up to 40% of their waking time doing this. Licking has many different functions. First of all, they remove old hair by swallowing it. Usually they then regurgitate it in the form of lumps. Sometimes it happens that a cat's hairballs won't come out because of problems with their internal organs. And they may even need surgery because of this. Although this happens very rarely. Also, licking helps cats to cool down. The saliva evaporates from the cat's fur and thus helps it to cool down and avoid overheating. In the wild, licking allows cats to remove parasites from their fur, which can cause various diseases. Also, when a cat licks its coat, it stimulates blood circulation in the skin, which makes the coat healthier. Cats also lick each other as a social ritual that allows them to strengthen their friendships with other cats. That said, cats only lick themselves when they feel safe. I think many cat owners have bought them different cots or houses, but often cats prefer simple cardboard boxes or other small containers that barely fit. Here, for example, is my cat sitting in a mailbox. But why do cats have such a love for them? Scientists believe that cats feel especially safe in such small boxes. Of course, domestic cats in the apartment are not threatened by anything, but genes do make themselves felt. After all, when cats live in the wild, there are many dangers. Therefore, staying in a small, cramped box, cats feel calmer and feel safer. They regard it as a place where they can easily watch their prey without worrying about some snake or scorpion sneaking up on them from behind. Cats calm down more quickly when in a box, as studies have shown on cats arriving at a new kennel and being given boxes. Their stress levels dropped noticeably faster than those cats who didn't have boxes. Also, tight, narrow boxes help keep cats warm in our warm apartments. However, cats prefer higher temperatures than humans. So by being in a box, cats warm their bodies by a couple of degrees, which makes them feel more comfortable. So take care of your cats and give them small, cozy boxes to use. Your cats will thank you. Did you know that there are microorganisms that can control the mind and influence behavior? These microorganisms can only reproduce sexually when they are in the cat's body. The name of these microorganisms is taxoplasma. They reproduce sexually, after which their eggs come out of the cat with the feces. The parasite needs to get back into the other cat, and they do so with the help of various intermediaries, mostly through small rodents. Once inside the rodent, the taxoplasma affects its behavior and brain. Normally, a healthy mouse will be afraid of cats and avoid meeting them. However, a mouse infected with toxoplasmosis, on the contrary, will purposely seek out places where it smells of cat urine. This benefits the parasite because then the likelihood of the cat eating the irritated mouse increases, and the parasite achieves its goal of reproducing inside the cat. And the cycle repeats itself over and over again. The bad news is that people too can contract toxoplasmosis through contaminated water or raw or insufficiently heat-treated meat. There is speculation that some people are crazy about cats precisely because they are infected with toxoplasmosis. However, there is no strong scientific evidence to support this. Nevertheless, these microorganisms can definitely affect human behavior. People infected with toxoplasmosis are more prone to take risks and may suffer from reduced reaction speed. Researchers have found that there are far more people who have been in traffic accidents who have toxoplasmosis than the population average. Such people are more likely to have attacks of unreasonable anxiety and neuroticism. At least 30% of the population is infected with it. However, most people do not have the disease in any way. But toxoplasmosis is very dangerous for pregnant women because it can harm the fetus. If you are a pregnant woman and you have a cat, I strongly advise you to study this issue to avoid negative consequences for your baby. Did you know that meowing in adult cats is a tool to manipulate people? They only do it when a human is around. When cats are alone with each other or other animals, they don't meow, but use other sounds to communicate. Small newborn kittens meow when they are demanding that their mother feed them. However, when that period ends, cats meow only in the presence of humans, mostly to demand food from them. Cats can produce about 100 sounds with their mouth and larynx, while dogs can only make 10 sounds. This does not mean that cats are smarter than dogs, but their sound range is much greater. A cat's purr, or as it is also called purr, as many people believe, indicates that the cat is well and content. 
Cats purr when they are stroked, fed, and when they are begging for food. They may also purr in stressful situations, such as when they are caught in the street and taken to a shelter, or even during the procedure of being put to sleep due to illness. Purring in most cases means that the cats are well, but purring has another purpose as well. The frequency of these vibrations during rumbling is believed by modern scientists to help the skin and bones recover. That is, cats use purring to prepare for injuries and damage to their bodies. Purring for cats is a procedure of self-restoration and relaxation. Many cats make a very strange sound when they look at birds outside the window. This chirping is most likely a manifestation of a strong desire to devour the bird when the cat's adrenaline in the blood is off the charts. Although some people think that cats attract birds in this way, but it is not so. The problem is that no birds fly to this sound. The other sound that cats are all familiar with is the hiss. With it, it's simple. The cat wants to scare a potential adversary. Cats can also growl, although this is extremely rare. There are many other sounds in cats. If you have a cat, you probably know about them. If a young kitten is taken from its mother very early and then fed through a pacifier, it may not learn when and what sounds to use. Therefore, such a kitten may hiss, for example, even when he is actually having fun and is happy to see his owner. Cats make sounds for people. For example, when they meow, they experiment with the tone and volume of their meows. Have you noticed that your cat sometimes meows particularly pitifully? This means that she has learned that a pitiful meow works better because you are then more likely to give her food because you feel sorry for her. Cats realize this very quickly and use the pitiful sounds to manipulate their owners. Sometimes a cat will crumple its owner with its paws. Adult cats do this when they feel maximum comfort and trust in their owner. But initially, the roots of this behavior are in infancy. Baby kittens crumple their mother's belly as they suckle their milk to make it flow better. When a cat behaves this way with you, it means that she has the most affectionate feelings for you. Now let's talk about cat drugs. Of course, there are various chemicals in nature that are found in certain plants that can affect the behavior of cats when they inhale or eat these substances. The clearest example of such a substance is cat's reaction to valerian. If you have ever given it to a cat, you may have noticed that it begins to behave very unusually rolling around on the floor, meowing loudly, trying to sniff the valerian over and over again. The fact is that valerian root causes cats a real euphoria, because that's how their brain works. That's how it reacts to these substances. In the same way that other chemicals cause euphoria in humans. If there were a similar plant that also caused euphoria in humans simply by inhaling its scent, it would certainly be banned. It is worth noting that not all cats are susceptible to valerian. Some do not react to it at all. This is due to genetics. Valerian should not be given to cats for fun, as it can be dangerous to their health and lead to addiction. There is a safer drug for cats that is catnip. This plant too has substances that stupefy the cat, improve its mood and make it frolic and run around. However, there is no risk of developing an addiction to it. The effect of catnip lasts from 5 to 15 minutes, after which a tolerance develops and the cat will not react to catnip in any way for several hours. Generally speaking, there are many herbs in nature that are addictive to cats, but most are toxic to cats and can lead to overdose and death. The average domestic cat lives from 12 to 18 years, but as with humans, there are exceptions in the feline world. There is one documented case in history when a cat lived as long as 36 years. His name was Cream Puff, and he lived in Texas. His owner fed him dry cat food, along with broccoli, turkey, and eggs. He also built an entire playground in his garage for his cat to actively spend time in. The cat's owner claimed that he put a drop of red wine in his cat's food every day and was sure that this was what influenced its longevity. However, modern scientists are skeptical of this claim. There is no reason to believe that red wine in microscopic doses prolongs the life of cats. So this record was established solely due to good genes. Just like humans, cats can serve in the Navy. They are not just a toy for sailors, but have an important function, to catch rats and mice, which often breed on ships. This was especially true in the past, when sanitary conditions on ships were not as good as they are now. Service on warships was dangerous, especially during the war. There is one particular sea cat in history who was nicknamed the Unsinkable Sam. He originally served as a rat catcher on the German destroyer Bismarck during World War II. 
Nine days after going out on assignment, the ship was sunk by British ships and nearly the entire crew was killed. However, British sailors saw a floating black and white cat among the wreckage and took it aboard. Since they did not know his name, they named him Sam. Sam began serving on a British destroyer called the Cossack. After a while, the Cossack was torpedoed by a German submarine and sunk, killing 159 British sailors. But Sam survived and was picked up again from the wreckage. After that, he served on the British aircraft carrier Artroel. However, that ship too was torpedoed by a submarine, and the entire crew was able to abandon it in front of the sinking ship. Sam was rescued from a passing ship. After the third shipwreck, they decided to leave Sam ashore. He lived with an influential British naval official for a while before being sent to the city of Belfast. Sam survived the war and died peacefully in 1955. A painting of him is in the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich. Household cats are cute and fluffy creatures, sometimes affectionate, but that's how they seem only to us humans. After all, we are much bigger than they are and they can't hurt us. However, domestic cats are also bloodthirsty and ruthless killers, causing many species of small mammals, lizards, and birds to become endangered or already extinct. According to U.S. studies, stray and domestic cats, which are allowed outside, kill an estimated 20 billion mammals and 2 billion birds each year. Although cats have become domesticated animals, they have retained their natural ability and desire to kill. The problem is that in the wild, the cat population cannot be so large as to upset the balance. However, due to the breeding of cats by humans, they're spreading across the planet and bringing them to different corners, cats are beginning to destroy the natural ecosystems there, destroying entire populations of small animals and birds that existed for millions of years without such predators. It is believed that domestic cats are to blame for the complete extinction of 33 animal species. The problem is especially acute in Australia, where cats were introduced by Europeans during the colonization of the continent. The feral domestic cats have seriously disturbed the natural balance. The Australian government is looking for ways to combat the problem, including the use of genetic technology aimed at depriving feral cats of their ability to breed. Other Australian politicians have suggested the culling or mass baiting of cats to preserve the continent's biodiversity. Write in the comments who you like more, cats or dogs, and explain your answer. I'm happy to read your comments. Writing comments and subscribing to the channel affect the development of YouTube algorithms. So please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye.